We've already kind of mentioned about binary stars because I've talked about the fact that a white dwarf might have a companion that feeds it. So I've alluded to that fact. So basically in this lecture, we talk about binary stars, star clusters, and we talk about our uh, galaxies. So binary stars, about half of the stars in the sky, we expect to have a close companion star called a binary star. They are close enough to each other to be gravitationally bound to each other. So they revolve around each other and they start feeding each other too. Binary stars transfer mass to each other and revolve, they revolve around each other, okay? So the mass transfer takes place something like this. So we expect that you have two stars, for example. This one is, happens to be the heavier one. So it's going to die first. It's going to become a red supergiant. It's going to start filling. This is known as its Roche lobe, you see? So this empty, this uh, invisible region around the star. It get, becomes a red supergiant. And then because there is a companion, it starts feeding it, you see? Starts feeding it. So it says, mass transfer takes place when a heavy star is dying, gets large enough to feed its Roche lobe. It then transfers mass to its companion through the Lagrangian point. The Lagrangian point it is the point of um, between the two stars where the two Roche, Roche lobes meet. Okay. Now what happens to that star? As it feeds that star, it goes down in mass. It's a good thing for the star. It says, hey, I don't have to die right away. I have a companion. I'm able to transfer some of my mass to that companion. And that companion says, OK, that's fine. Give me your mass so you don't have to die right away. Now what happens? The companion star is heavier now, right? This star is lighter. This guy says, oh, no, because you gave me mass, now I'm going to die. So. Now it becomes a re uh, yellow giant, fills its Roche lobe. The other, says, the other star says, hey, millions of years ago, you helped me out. Now I'm going to help you out. Okay, now you feed me mass. So this guy feeds that guy mass, and they're doing each other a favor. Okay? And then when that guy feeds that guy mass, it doesn't have to die either. Now, can this last forever? Can anything good last forever? No. Eventually... You, they each feed each other mass, but then, you know, there's a limit to that. They're both going to eventually die, you see. So this enables the star to live longer. However, the other star begins to die and fills its Roche lobe and returns the favor. This cycle can repeat many times until eventually they can't do that anymore and they run out of energy and then they die. Both, they both die. Okay, different kinds of binaries, which what I'm talking about is different stages. What kind of kinds of uh, binaries are there that are at the different stages of mass transfer? So we, we go to here, figure 1232. See here? So we've seen a lot of binaries like this. They're going around each other. Neither one is feeding the other one. Why? Because neither one has really fully grown yet. Okay, so neither star fills its Roche lobe. They're still living stars. So this is called a what kind of binary? Detached. Why? They're just detached. They're not feeding each other at all. Okay? B, semi-detached binary. One star fills its Roche lobe. You see here, it's filled with Roche lobe, and you see here, it's already starting to transfer mass. Mass can flow from the enlarged star to the smaller one. So what is that known as? Semi-detached. And then here uh, uh, on the bottom, contact binary. Both stars fill their Roche lobe. These ones are rare to find because... You have to find the star and another star, and they're both growing, they're both growing, and simultaneously, they touch each other at one point. They fill their Roche lobes at the same time. 
mass can flow from either star to the other across the boundary point. So this can feed this, this guy can feed this, and it can go both ways. So what kind of binary is that? Contact. They're contacting each other at one point, okay? These are rare. This one is uh, more frequently we can find this. This happens when the two stars originally were very close to each other, okay? So this guy fills, fills up, fills up, and then this guy may be starting to fill up, fill up, and then by the time that this guy fills up and then this guy starts to fill up, they kind of look like one star, okay? You see here? Over contact binary, both stars overfill their Roche lobes. You see here this one, Ro Roche lobe here? This one fill, fills up and go, spills over. This one fills up, spills over. And then these are hard to detect because to us, it looks like it's just one binary. It just looks like it's one star, you know? So both stars share the same outer atmosphere. You see there? The outer atmosphere, they share. They share the same outer atmosphere. In this lecture, lecture 12, you're going to have a lot of kinds of categories of things that you have to know. And then there's going to be examples. Like example of this is this. Example of this is that. Example of that is that. And uh, for to study for the test, you can make uh, on your notes, you can make a, a portion where you are putting all the examples. So if I ask you on the test, what's an example of this? You can have an idea. What's an example of that? You could know. So example of a semi-detached is the second brightest star in Perseus, Elgol, Beta Persei, and the second brightest star in Lyra, where the accretion disk covers the secondary star. So these are examples of semi-detached. Uh, the contact binary is the one that I said is rare to find. They're both touching each other at one point. Over contact binary, both stars overfill their Roche lobes and share their outer atmosphere. That's the one that I showed earlier. They are very close to each other. So it usually happens when the stars begin very close. Example of that, W Ursae Majoris. So this is one example of that. These are two examples of that one.